For those of you guys that like to see little CRTs, well, we got one here, another one. This one got uh, smacked with a power surge and it no longer works. So, we're going to um, see if I can get this one, which I use as a clock in my shop, fixed. You know, I wasn't even going to shoot this video today, but my little my little TV that I use to display the time on, it's a nice burn in, eh, from the time, has uh, gone dead. We had a power failure here the other day, and uh, when the power came back, well, this didn't. So... I wasn't even going to bother to shoot this thing. But you know, I'm so pissed off right now at YouTube because you guys haven't seen me finish the restoration on this on this uh, video. I had to pull it. I put it up on YouTube, hour long, spent a lot of time overhauling this radio, getting it working. I'm getting it working great. And uh, I put it up on YouTube and within uh, hours, it was not suitable for advertising. So I had to make the video private, and I've appealed to YouTube. But even at that, because the notifications went out, over 500 people have watched the video before I actually pulled it offline and made it a totally private video because I won't get any revenue for those first 500 views. It's kind of pissing me off, so... If this continues, if I, if I, if I continue to get uh, um, stuff by YouTube um, that is not suitable for advertising, you're going to see all of my videos go Patreon only until I'm satisfied that YouTube isn't going to pull more bullshit. So if there's an incentive for any of you to become a patron, uh, maybe this is it. Because uh, uh, depending on what happens with this one, if this one goes, if this one gets hit with... Uh, the not suitable for advertising um, flag, then uh, I'm going to start just releasing stuff, Patreon only, and it'll sit there for however long it takes. Uh, I had one video that was actually repairing a CFL bulb that had been up for years, had 350,000 views, I think, and then YouTube decided to, they were going to make it uh, not suitable for advertising and I appealed it, and it took them 90 days, 90 days to remonetize my video. So that was 90 days that I didn't make any revenue on that video. So if this is the bullshit that YouTube is going to go through, then everything I post is going to go Patreon only until I know that they're not going to, um, or, or I'll release it Patreon only and leave it there for a few days, and if it doesn't get flagged, then I'll release it. But if it does get flagged, it's going to sit there until YouTube uh, releases it. Anyway, that's my rant on the crap that's going on at YouTube. We thought that this bullshit was done, but it's not. Let's tear into this thing and see why it's not working. My entire goal on this, of course, is to burn that tube as bad as I possibly can before the tube actually fails. So I leave this thing running all the time. But as I say, it uh, we had a power failure and when the power came back, this didn't work. That's warm. So the regulator is warm. break that tube. There's not a lot of slack on these wires.
So this set is based on the NEC UPC 1379C. And that's the chip right there. This is a single chip solution that delivers all of the synchronizing signals and drive signals through one chip. So I found this copy of uh, the IC online. It's quite interesting because this thing doesn't even, like this set could operate off 110 volts um, with no transformer, just a single resistor because it has an internal shunt regulator built in. So this is the layout of the IC itself. As you can see we've got power going into pin number 10 and as it shows here for 110 volt set they would use a 8.2k resistor and it shunted down to its drive voltage here uh, same pin from a 12 volt source would be driven like a 430 ohm resistor be a hundred microfarad cap here so this here certainly could uh, this this circuit here could be part of the problem if that cap were to go open and you ended up with a ripple or, or voltage that was not stable this thing could shut down but the reason I wanted this this uh, this uh, layout is because I want to put the scope on it and see whether I'm getting my drive signals. What I should be uh, seeing here is I should be seeing my horizontal drive, which this would be the driver that drives out. This would be the output that drives to the horizontal output over here. And uh, of course our vertical output is on pin number seven, looks like. No, pin number eight. This is our vertical output, which, which drives the yoke. It, this has the, the vertical output circuitry and everything is all built right in. So this drives the yoke directly. There's the yoke there. Uh, horizontal output, or horizontal drive drives the horizontal output transistor. So I wanted the, the, the pin out just so that I could see whether I'm getting signals and getting voltage going in and getting my signal. So let's grab a meter. And we'll do some voltage measurement and I'm just going to grab a jumper hook up one up to ground pin one is on this side here. <coughs> so I'm going to look at pin number 10. <clears throat> so this is pin number 10 over here. This should be my my voltage input. When I plug in the power this should be my a 12 volts in. Watch the thing work now. Okay, what have we got here? 2.8. Okay, well that would explain why it's not working. Twelve volts coming in here. This is my regulator over here. Well, that looks to be a bit low. That would certainly explain why it's not working now. I think if I, I'm going to get my power supply, I'm just going to put 12 volts into the, uh, the oscillator and see whether it actually starts up. So here's my power supply. I'll set my power supply down to yeah, about 10 volts or so. Set it to 9, 
Um, it'll start at anything over 8 volts. I think it says here. Um, I was looking at the specs and I'm pretty sure it said it will start at anything over um, 8. So I'll set my power supply to 8 volts. current to like 300 milliamps. Okay, pin number 10. Should be this one here. If I touch pin 10 to here, does it come on? No, I don't see anything. I'm going to take this to 12 volts. I'll apply 12 volts to the regulator. And the set comes on. Aha! Let's see, see? If I show you the screen, if I put 12 volts here, we have a regulation problem. Okay? This regulator is not working. This is the regulator transistor here. We're just going to pull this transistor out and check it. It might be bad. Heat sink lifts away. Okay, we'll grab the fluke meter. Test the transistor. Hmm. Well, that almost looks okay. No, it's okay. PMP. Your conduction there. We have no conduction in that direction. It's not like we have any leakage, but this transistor was definitely not regulating. Let's see if I can find another transistor and we'll just try a new one in there and see whether that'll fix this thing up. The only thing I noticed about this old transistor here is um, it's a 6.6 .6 volt drop. Normally, a uh, transistor would have like a 0.7 volt. You see? So, I'm going to change it. I've got another one here. Should be equivalent, I think. And uh, we'll try this one and see whether this thing fires up.
It's working. We look at the voltages now. On the transistor. If we remember what they were before. We've got the uh, Eleven point nine eight there. Eleven point two four there, and eight volts there. I think we had like three the first time. Eight point two five. Eleven point three. And this is the input, the twelve volts input. And as you can see, it's working. So, that transistor looks like it was uh, bad. Okay, we'll put the uh, screw back in to retain the board. And there's my time display again. All set to continue. Continue the journey of burning this CRT. I wonder if I should just adjust the vertical height, stretch it up a bit, make the digits a little bigger. Where the heck's the vertical height in this thing? One of these is vertical. There it is. There. Uh, go to a certain degree. I don't want to stretch it too much, but. If I stretch it up a little more, I can maybe burn a little more of the surface area of the tube. <laughs> Make bigger numbers. If I go too high, I'll, I'll end up with the fold over on the top. There. You can probably get by with that. That looks a little bigger. Since I'm not planning on using this thing for anything other than this, although I could. Because you see, I can, I can get my security cameras on here too. It's just a... Uh, where are they? They're in here somewhere. There's my security cameras. So I can get them on here. In black and white, of course. It's pretty bright in here. But I just use this to display the time on my bench. It's working. Back together it goes and up on my bench. There it was, just a transistor. And as I say, this thing, when I measure this thing, at first I looked at this th the transistor and it looked okay because I'm getting forward voltage drop across both the base to emitter and the base to collector. But I was only seeing a 0.6 volt drop and for silicon transistors, it's typically 0.7. So something went wrong with this transistor. Uh, maybe after all those years of use and when the power went down uh, because a windstorm blew a bunch of trees down and caused a power surge. So I'm thinking maybe a uh, surge came down and it just finished the transistor off. But that looks to be all the problem. Change one part, it's back up and running. Thanks for watching. We'll see if uh, YouTube manages to pull their bullshit on this one and uh, demonetize this one. We'll catch you in the next one.